Welcome back and joining us on the show now is Kunal Shah. He's head of commodities and currencies at Nirmal Bank. Kunal, hi, thank you so much for joining us. I'll start with the metals because uh, we've seen uh, better data come in from China in sense of the trade numbers. The employment data was on the positive side. So is the case with the PMI numbers as well. And we have seen that support come in for metals. Uh, for the weekly basis, we still are in the negative for whether it's copper, aluminum, steel, iron ore. We are ending this week in the negative for all of these metals. But a little sp small shine that seems to be coming in from China. How supportive would you take that as? Uh, well, as far as the Chinese trade data is con uh, uh, concerned, we have seen uh, uh, the export numbers slightly ticking up. But uh, overall, the import side still there are concerns. Uh, it seems that the internal demand of China continues to remain weak and uh, that is going to be a big drag. The real, real estate sector continues to be uh, one of the major problems, one of the major grey areas. So again, the stock of stimulus is started, whether they will come up with a big stimulus or not, that time will tell. From last four days, we are hearing that the big stimulus is underway. But the fact remains is the underlying weakness in the Chinese economy is continued to stay. Uh, the meaningful upside in metals is, is not something which is the base case scenario right now. Uh, the decelerization in the economic activity is going to continue, even though some, uh, some measures like rate cut or uh, some stimulus can lead to some bounce back or pullback in price of metals. But I think the structural weakness is going to continue. So 80% uh, of the negative news are factored in in the price. Uh, some more weakness is uh, underway, I think, in metals in a short-term uh, period. And my view in metals right now is uh, uh, sell on rallies. So metals are not going to do well in times to come. On others, on one side, we have the financial tightening underway in Western economies, and China continues to, you know, see a major growth advance. So I'm not expecting any major upside. Copper around 710, 715. A good levels to go short 690 can come on the downside. That that is our view. Is all right. That's about copper canal, but uh, for zinc as well, which has uh, been a better metal than the others. Here as well, we've seen prices of 300, 320. It's trading at around 200, 220 in the Indian markets right now. Do you see more upside coming from here? I mean, are you bullish at all on any of the metals? Uh, so, macro from the macroeconomic scenario, I'm not bullish right now uh, because the Chinese growth continues to be a big drag. As far as zinc is concerned, zinc is also looking a bit weak. On MCX, I'm expecting zinc prices to go down at test levels of 215 or 212 going forward. The steel demand, the galvanizing demand of zinc is definitely going to face some pressure because of the slowing production growth in, of steel in China. The way iron ore prices are going down, it clearly indicates that the demand for steel is weak. Hence, the production in China has to go down. And if the production is going down, the demand for zinc is definitely going to suffer. So 50% of the zinc demand comes from China. And China continues to remain under pressure. So even zinc prices are not going to do well. 225, 226, good levels to go short, should not go above 230. And on the downside, 215, 210. 212 looks uh, very likely for zinc. All right, so not a buying opportunity that you can see in metals right now. But Kunal, also, what's your sense on the dollar index now? Because we've seen 100, we saw 107 and a half, and now we are trading at around 106 and a half. It has been a volatile move on to that one as well, which the metals are taking in or reading quite keenly. Okay, so uh, dollar index, our view is that uh, most of the worst, uh, the bond yield surge or the uh, U.S. not going to uh, cut the rates near term, higher for longer. All of these narratives have been completely played out. So dollar index have moved up from 99 to 107. So 108, I think dollar index should peak out. And uh, no matter whatever other data or whatever other commentaries coming from the Fed, dollar index should not strengthen significantly from here. The gradual uh, downtrend is something, is the base case scenario for the dollar index. And I expect uh, one and a half, two months down the line, dollar index will be somewhere settling at 104 or perhaps 103. Because all the worst is being priced in the bond market, is being priced in the dollar index. So I'm not expecting any major uh, strength coming in, in dollar index from these levels. Okay. What's your sense also on gold and silver? Because the previous week was a stronger one. And then this week, we've seen some profit taking come in yet again. I mean, yesterday was a great day. We almost saw $1,900 an ounce, $1,897 a high is what the charts show. But from there, there is decline yet again. 
So I have been bullish on gold from quite a, a long-term perspective and from quite a time. We, I am not. I was not expecting the bond yields to surge the way they did. So it was quite a dramatic where 100 pips of rise you've seen in US 10-year benchmark from 3.75 to almost 4.8. So that is priced in. The rates are going to stay higher for longer. So Fed has been doing that. They have been saying the inflation rate will be transitory. It is permanent right now. If you see the CPI numbers yesterday, the uh, the a lot of stickiness in the number from the uh, car side, the car rentals, car insurance, housing, uh, housing rentals. So all these numbers are 7%, 9%, 10% inflation. So that kind of numbers are going to stay. So uh, all of those higher for longer is priced in. So that is gone. Okay. What is now narrative? Central banks will continue to buy gold. When gold prices drop from $1950 to $1810, $1815, at that time, from 1800 to 1850 is the buying zone for central banks. Whoever have missed out are buying. So the in last one month, the central bank buying was very aggressive. And my view on gold is very constructive. I'm uh, still very bullish on gold. Uh, by Diwali, I think gold should test 1935, 1940 dollars. And 2024, I reiterate my targets, 2400 dollars for gold. In 24, uh, gold is going to leave this base. Uh, we are not going to see this $1,700, $1,800 for next two, three years. It is going to leave this base and it is going to go up. And uh, uh, I'm expecting a significant upside next year. All right. So 1935 by Diwali and 2400 by next year. So that's a clear bull talking about gold there. Thank you so much, Kunal, for joining us at CNBC TV18. And with that, it's a wrap on a halftime report. But Business Lunch will take all the action forward.